कुछ वो किया तो ठीक है शुरू करिए हाँ एक मिनट मुझे कैमरा ऑन करने दीजिए फिर आप रिकॉर्डिंग शुरू करिएगा हाँ आप दिख रहे हैं ना अ वेरी वार्म गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव लॉग्ड इन फॉर टूडेज काउंसिलिंग सेशन आई एम प्रोफेसर तनुजा फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी एट टी पी एस कॉलेज पटना फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू डेज वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट बी बी वाई सी टी वन थ्री थ्री एंड वी हैड फिनिश्ड आ वेरियस ब्लॉक्स इन द काउंसिलिंग प्रोसेस टूडे in the concluding session we'll be talking more of bbyct 133 so up till now we have understood what is ecology what is the importance of studying ecology what are the components of ecosystem how species make population population comprise community and the community has got various characteristics so after studying the various blocks today we will understand that in plant taxonomy the use of plants for various benefits to human beings have been classified according to their various contrasting characters or maybe characters which are correlated to each other and as i teach you or as i counsel you for today's topics we'll be studying the history of plant taxonomy with special emphasis on plant taxonomy in ancient india we are going to discuss the aims objectives and importance of taxonomy we are going to define and differentiate between taxonomy and systematics so as we talk of the history of plant taxonomy it would be good to refer the publication of charles darwin's epoch work origin of species where in 1859 it was considered a very important landmark in understanding biology so if you see your core study material we can see that there are two distinct eras pre evolutionary and post evolutionary and we call it the pre darwinian era and the post darwinian era the pre evolutionary era can be further divided into the ancient greeks and romans the herbalists the transition period and the post herbal period so if we say that the father of medicine known as hippocrates he has reported and is regarded as the founder of the hippocratic school of medicine which started to study the causes of diseases then it was aristotle 384 to 322 bc which marked the peak of the golden age of greece he regarded the plant as an integrated entity according to him leaves shoots and roots were not mere appendages of the plant but were members of an organizing thing later the father of botany theophrastus was a remarkable person who was born about 372 bc and in its broadest aspects under the leadership of theophrastus and his disciplines his work known as historia plantarum is the foundation of all we know about plants today Theophrastus also became a student of Plato at an early age and in fact his work clearly reflected the philosophy of Plato and Aristotle 
He classified all the plants on the basis of form or texture as trees, shrubs, undershrubs, and herbs, and also distinguished them as annual, biennial, and perennial. Then the herbalists were more active during the Middle Ages, following the decline of the Greek and the Roman civilizations. And between the year 1530 and 1536, Otto Brunfelsius published his herbal, which is a description of large number of plants, many illustrated by woodcuts. Then it was William Turner, 1515 to 1568, whose a new herbal printed in English appeared in 1551, 1562, and the third part in 1568 is often called father of English botany. A significant contribution on taxonomy was made at this time by Caspar Bohin and Bohin's Prodromas Theatri Botanici 1620 and Pinax Theatri Botanici 1623 are important references in which he listed all the species of the plants. At the same time, we find one of the first attempts to utilize a binomial system of nomenclature. Handed down from the ancients and elaborated on by the herbalists was the doctrine of signatures, which was based on the concept that different plants or parts resemble portions of the human body. Then came the transition period from the Renaissance to the modern period, and it produced many notable workers, and there was numerous publication of literature. European herbalists studied these plants and added them to the growing list of herbals. Fuchs in 1542 listed about 500 species. Bohin in 1623 described about 6,000 species. John Ray in 1703 described more than 18,000 plants. It was followed by development of more specific systems of naming and arranging plants. Then came the post herbal period. It is difficult here to draw a sharp line of demarcation between the transition period, marked by various attempts of classification, all of which were more or less artificial, that is based on uh, form relationships, and the modern period, which progressed steadily in the development of a system based on natural affinities. So if we talk of plant taxonomy in ancient India, the history of botanical science would date back to the Vedic period, approximately 15,000 BC to 500 BC. The early treatises on botany, like Ayurveda, Chakra Samhita and Shushrut Samhita were therefore primary, primarily utilitarian. It is said that more than 2,500 years ago, Bhikshu Atriya, a well-known uh, teacher at the University of Takshila, asked one of his pupils, Jivika, to collect, identify and describe the properties of all the plants growing within the distance of the four yojanas of the university. Then it was Parashar, and then the system of plant classification was considered much more advanced than any other system proposed anywhere in that world before 18th century. So the present day Cucurbitaceae was called Tripusaganium, and was characterized by having flowers which were epigynous, sometimes bisexual with five sepals, five fused petals, three stamens, and a unilocular ovary with three rows of ovules. So with this historical background, we can say that plant taxonomy is the science that finds, describes, classifies, and names plants. The term systematics is applied to the study or discipline of variations among organisms in order to form formulate a classification system. The aims and objectives of taxonomy, therefore, 
it is to understand that what is the benefit of such plants. The systematic study would benefit the people who are related to forestry, medicine, paper industry, food, etc. It is also associated with the study of plants and animal diseases as it affects human economy. Another objective of taxonomy is the assemblage of knowledge gained. This is usually in the form of treatises useful to fellow scientists and to civilization in general. Manuals are prepared so that plants of an area may be more readily identified and named. Distributional studies are published so that others may know of the extensions, corrections, and interrelationships of the taxa within an area. The principal objective of plant taxonomy, therefore, could be to provide a convenient method for identification and communication, to produce a coherent and universal system of classification, to provide a single Latin scientific name to every plant and groups of plants in the world, both living and fossil, to maintain inventory of the word flora, and to demonstrate the evolutionary implications of plant diversity. There are four important steps in taxonomy, characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. Characterization is the basic requirement for understanding the different parts of the organism and it thus is description of the characters. So, a taxonomist would observe, analyze, synthesizes, and then describes, ultimately identifies and determines the position and rank of a new taxa, and also the correct name. All this would help in communicating effectively by classifying, identifying, and then determining the relationship. So, this generates a system of information for taxonomic purposes to provide effective methods. And it also conserves a natural heritage and provides valuable information on the basis of whether the particular species is threatened, endangered, etc. When we say characterization is the first step in taxonomy, it is because it is the primary source of data for understanding organisms. And identification provides us how to understand based on the characterization the process where you determine a taxon as being identical with or similar to another an already known element or based on the study of the characterization it is different so by comparison of the characters it is possible to decide about the identification of the plant. It is followed by classification where two or more groups of plants have been differentiated or identified from their characters and then it becomes necessary to recognize their relationship. Thus, the end result of this would lead to a system of classification. Classification would involve arrangement of organisms into groups having common characteristics. These are arranged according to a system. A system of classification is necessary to allow us to identify plants and to communicate scientifically with others. So we can say it is an information storage and retrieval system without which scientific communication would not be possible.
when we say nomenclature it means it is very important constituent of plant taxonomy why because the plants have been given names by tribes in their own languages and there are different parts of the world where different languages are spoken these give the names of the plants in common or vernacular names and there is no uniformity all over the world therefore it is important to have a name which is universally understood and because ecologists horticulturists biochemists agriculturists and others should have a reference system for plants they are using in their research so the scientific naming of plant communities comes under nomenclature thus we have understood up till now that plant taxonomy helps prepare an inventory of world's flora it is a prerequisite to prepare a coherent and universal system of classification it is important tool to study evolutionary implications of plant diversity and principles and rules of plant taxonomy provide a single latin scientific name for every species of plant both extinct and extant study of plant taxonomy we saw can be divided into pre and post evolutionary eras the pre evolutionary era is further divided into ancient greek and roman era herbalist era the transition period and the post herbal era and we also understood that plant taxonomy also flourished in ancient india and ayurved charak samhita shushrut samhita are some of the famous in ancient indian literature dealing with it so as we continue with bbyct 133 in unit 12 we see what are herbaria and botanical gardens we all know that plant taxonomy is dependent on many species and in turn they are equally dependent on it so plant taxonomy would also depend on other disciplines like ecology plant breeding phytosociology pharmacology and biochemistry and the accumulated knowledge of earth's flora is far from perfect once names and classification systems have been provided there must be methods for us to know and identify a taxon as being similar to or different with other entities by certain points in this unit as we discuss we'll understand the ecological and phytosociological aspects of taxonomy herbaria botanic gardens and brief information about royal botanic gardens at q field studies are very desirable for understanding the relationship of any groups of plants while making an ecological study in the field records of the season of flowering fruiting and material collection for all stages of development are essential one must make note of the location of collection the habitat type and the characteristics of the soil So a herbarium is a place where the dried and mounted specimens are stored according to any recognized system of classification and are available for any reference in other words we can say it is a warehouse of information about plant diversity this concept of herbaria began early in the 16th century in italy when collections of dried plants were sewn on paper Luca Ghini 1490 to 1556 invented the herbarium and this art was disseminated throughout Europe by his students certain equipments therefore are necessary for such collections of plants where one requires certain tools for digging up roots and rhizomes a knife for cutting branches forceps for opening flower buds 
a vasculum is needed for accommodating collected specimens, specimens and pressed. A plant press with blotters or newsprint is necessary for pressing and keeping the collected specimen. And then one must obtain necessary permissions from the authorities concerned to visit a forest. Normally, we say the forests are rich sources of flora and fauna. The collection should be in such a way that the entire plant along with its roots, flowers, are all collected. If one is collecting phytoplanktons, it should be slowly done by towing with a fine net. And then, if there are tree ferns and other land plants, they must be kept in polythene bags and then pressed between the folds of newspaper. There are certain plants which have cones, fruits and needles which can be kept separately in polythene bags. So this herbarium we just define as the mounted specimens and their storage according to any recognized system of classification fulfills the following functions. Here in a herbarium, the plant specimens are permanently preserved in herbaria and there are representations of the species of the genus which can be used for taxonomic research. The classification of the world's flora is based mainly on this herbarium specimen and is often used for consultation. Monographs of genera or families can be prepared after the study of herbarium specimens and it gives knowledge about the distribution and occurrence of plant species. A herbaria provides information about palynology, anatomy, and chemical aspects also of the desired plants, and it provides scientific information to the public regarding the plants. So, there are many important herbarias of world. Some of them are Herbarium of Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew, Richmond, Surrey, UK. Herbarium of British Museum of Natural History, London, UK. Herbarium of New York Botanical Garden, New York, USA. Herbarium of Missouri Botanical Garden, St. Louis, USA. Herbarium of Museum National de Historic Natural, Paris, France. Herbarium of Komarov Botanical Institute, St. Petersburg, Russia. So forth and so on, so on, the complete list can be seen in your course material that has been provided. As far as India is concerned, we have some herbarium of the Forest Research Institute, Dehradun, the Madras Herbarium, Coimbatore, herbarium of the Natural Botanical Research Institute, Lucknow, herbarium of the BSI, Allahabad, herbarium of the BSI, Dehradun, Herbarium of the BSI Shillong and Herbarium of BSI Pune. If we talk of botanical gardens of world and India, a botanical garden is essentially a collection of living plants maintained for both pure and functional studies. And according to Jackson, 1999, a botanical garden is an institution holding a documented collection of living plants for the purpose of scientific research, conservation, display, and education. It is a place for ex situ conservation, as well as a place where economically and end endangered plants are displayed for the purpose of research and education. A good botanical garden should explain the importance of afforestation, Evolution of cultivation of plants, horticultural practices for the layman, and distributions. It should also be a guide to go around the garden to look for plants of one's liking. So, in fact, it provides an enclosure for different kinds of plants where one can have an idea of the various plants that are there. 
A greenhouse is a place to grow plants in desired environment in temperate countries where plenty of air, water are available and there is balanced temperature. The essential elements of a successful greenhouse environment are heat, humidity, ventilation, light. These are all managed. The glass roofing of the greenhouse is substituted by split bamboos, many a times by plating matting of coconut or date palm leaves also, supported by a strong frame. So it essentially not always be made up of glass totally. The first garden for medicinal plants was established by an Italian professor of botany, Luca Guinea, 20, 1290 to 1556 AD. This was known as the psychic garden. Sorry, the physic garden. It was based on the idea, belief that all plants had been put on earth by God for man's use. If we see these botanical gardens, there are certain roles that they fulfill. They are cultivated and maintained so as to cater to the interests of the people as far as scientific sound basis is concerned. They show the vegetation of the world on geographical characteristics. They have plants which are also in danger of extinction and thus save species. They also plan germplasm collection. They serve as a research center in various fields and they facilitate taxonomic studies by preserved and live plants. They also promote educational programs and research in experimental botany and ornamental horticulture. The UN Convention on Environment and Development held at Rio de Janeiro in June 1992 led to the signing of the Convention on Biodiversity by 187 countries by April 2002. Some of the important botanic gardens are the Royal Botanic Garden, Kew, London, which is a monumental institute in the world with modern and well-equipped laboratories and collection of rare plants. The foundation of this monumental garden dates back to 1759 when William at Alton took over as the superintendent. The Royal Botanic Garden Q has got various catalogues and one such catalogue, Hortus Cubensis, lists the plants grown during that period. In India, we have the Indian Botanic Garden, Shivpur Havra, which is also called as Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose Indian Botanic Garden. It was established in 1770 by Colonel Robert Kyed as the East India Company Garden. And there is a great banyan tree about 250 years old with circumference of 400 meters and more than 2,900 aerial roots. There are about 450 species of medicinal plants which can have tremendous application in Ayurveda, Yunani, homeopathy, and modern, modern allopathy. Then there is NBG Lucknow National Botanic Garden spread over 75 acres on the south bank of River Gomti. The main role are undertake intensive floristic survey and collect accurate and detailed information on the occurrence, distribution, ecology, and economic utility of plants in the country. India is a country with very wide and diverse geographical conditions. So here there are, in fact, government of India PSI with headquarters at Kolkata with four circles, the BSI Southern Circle at Coimbatore, BSI 
Eastern Circle at Shillong, BSI Western Circle at Pune, and BSI Northern Circle at Dehradun. The country has been divided into Eastern, Northern, Western, and Southern, with centers at Kolkata, Saharanpur, Pune, and Madras. These botanical survey of India play an important role as far as the publications of annual reports and the records and bulletins all are important for cataloging the various floristic plants distributed all over India. And the vegetative resources of the country are well tabulated. So we have understood that the uh, we have understood that there when we undertake field studies, these are important to understand the ecological and phytosociological relationships of plants. When we undertake field studies, precise recording of location where we collect the plants, the habitat types, the soil characteristics, the coloration of vegetative and floral plants, the vernation of the corolla, the presence of laticiferous and nectif nectariferous structures, the pollinating agents, the time of pollination, etc., is made. Herbarium is a place where dried and mounted specimens are stored according to any recognized system of classification. The herbaria are available to taxonomists for any reference. All educational and research institutes maintain their own herbaria. Careful collection, the selection, processing, presentation, field notes, proper identification, storage, etc., constitute the herbarium ethics. A herbarium specimen may be exchanged, donated, borrowed from another herbarium. Strict structured protocol is maintained while exchange of such herbarium specimen. And we have also discussed that the herbarium of the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q, UK, herbarium of the British Museum, London, UK, Central National Herbarium, Kolkata, India, and the herbarium of National Botanical Research Institute, Lucknow, India, are some of the important herbarium all over the world. We have also seen and discussed that a botanical garden should cultivate and maintain plants of special interest on scientific basis. Such plants should be representative of various geographical regions of the world. A botanical garden serves as a reservoir of germ plus collection of rare and endangered plants. It should also serve as a research center in various fields of biology. Such gardens should also promote educational programs, not only for students, but also for general public. It also offers live plant material and seeds for exchange. So as we progress in Unit 3 of BBYCT 133, you can see your course material where we are going to discuss taxonomic documentation. So we have understood that identification is an integral part of all taxonomic works. And most often, the identification of any plant specimen is done by comparison with an authentic, that is, previously identified plant specimen. Such a process of determination of correct name of plant is called species determination. To determine the correct identification of a species, the person should have knowledge of taxonomic methods, manuals, and other resources. An accurate identification is essential in the field of biogeography, biochemistry, ecology, genetics, physiology, agriculture, pharmacology, apart from the classical disciplines of all sciences related to plant work. So, 
there is an enormous enormous amount of taxonomic literature where details regarding taxonomic aspects of plants including identification classification and nomenclature are given the taxonomic indexes they serve as an aid to locate quickly the source of original publication of a name this helps us to learn if a particular name has been applied to a plant or to know in which order family subfamily or the tribe the particular plant belongs to some of the important indexes to vascular plants are index cubensis plantarum phenero gemerum this work is a cornerstone to the literature on the systematics of flowering plants gray herbarium card index published from harvard university cambridge massachusetts usa has database according to which new names and new combinations can be applied in any category of the flowering plants and pteridophytes of the western hemisphere similarly you can go through your course material there is index londinensis index nominum genericorum etc as we move forward in our course content we see the word floras so a flora is a work dedicated to the plants of a particular region and also usually restricted to major segment of plant kingdom there are numerous floras that account for all the vascular or seed plants a few important floras are world floras like the natural history of plants genera plantarum families of flowering plants the flora of west tropical africa flora of ladakh flora of delhi flora of presidency of bombay flora of upper little valley of kashmir himalaya and so forth and so on so if you see your course material there's a list of floras then you have another term which is monographs and a monograph is defined as the complete account as can be made at a given time of any one family tribe or genus nothing being neglected of it all elements of the treatise are accounted for by dichotomous keys full synonyms and complete descriptions precise designations of types together with notes as to where the types are deposited citations of the specimens are examined the distributional ranges are understood and notes on habitats and discussions of taxonomic and nomenclatorial considerations are done for example P Maheshwari and R N Konar 1971 Pinus Botanical Monograph published by CSR New Delhi Then there are manuals which is a book that contains information on the area of coverage and keys and description to the families genera and species Such manuals become the standard reference for the flora of a particular area A modern floristic researcher diverts much attention to typification, nomenclature, distribution and ecology in addition to the basic comparative morphology. Then there are revisions which differ from the monograph in being much less in degree of scope and completeness. It generally accounts for a single genus or a section of a larger genus. and periodicals is a publication appearing at regular intervals the internet now has provided a wealth of information about plants it provides quick access to floras checklists images of plants detailed treatments to group of plants and to get the same information or to reach the same website there exists many starting points in addition to the various paths to reach such destination 
So we see that key, which is an artificial device or tool, or an arrangement for the determination of names of the plants included in it. And it can be defined as a device for easily identifying an unknown plant by a sequence of choices between two or more statements. A key thus represents one kind of taxonomic literature. The first key was introduced in 1778 by French botanist Jean Baptiste de Lamarck. A good key is in fact a synopsis presenting graphically the technical characteristics which in general or in aggregate differentiates the taxa. Some of the characteristics are that it should be reliable and constant. It should be appropriate for the area from where the plants to be identified was collected. It can be used with ease and certainty. It should employ macroscopic characters that are easily observable. The statements should be positive and it is desirable that the user is provided with a series of choices between two mutually exclusive and parallel statements called couplets. The initial word of a couplet should refer to a plant or a plant part like plant, stem, leaf, flower, etc. Two consecutive couplets should not begin with the same word. Both vegetative and reproductive characters are used in a couplet. The initial word of a couplet should be a noun referring to a plant part. Three and more characters in a couplet should be avoided. Thus, the prerequisites for the preparation of the key are that it should be dichotomous. The first word of the couplet should be identical. Second part of the couplet should be contrasting. Avoid range of characters in a couplet. The statement of the couplet should be positive. The features that are chosen should be easily observable. And couplets of a key may be numbered or lettered. So we see that there are different kinds of keys. As you can read your course material, there are indented keys, bracketed keys. And uh, all this are used for describing plants. So, we have understood that identification is an integral to taxonomic work. The process of identification of any plant specimen is called species determination. General taxonomic indexes, floras, monographs, manuals, revisions, periodicals, etc. constitute important documents to determine the correct name of a plant specimen. These are called taxonomic documents. General taxonomic indexes help locate the sources of original publication of a name. Index Kivensis, Plantarum, Phenero, Gamerum, and Gray Herbarium card index are among the more authentic taxonomic indices. A flora provides an inventory of plants of a definite area and often restricted to the vascular plants. It includes plants that are indigenous, naturalized, it could be introduced, or invented. A monograph is a complete account at any given time of any one family, tribe, or genus. And a manual is a book that contains information on the area of coverage, keys, and description. It contains information about families, genera, and species, along with citation, authorship, synonyms, etc. A revision would account for only a section of a genus or elements as restricted to continent, smaller geographical area. A publication appearing at regular interval is called periodical. Each issue is called a number and a collection of numbers is called a volume. Internet also provides a wealth of information on plant systematics for quick access. And a key is an artificial device or arrangement for determination of names of the plants included in it. A key is described as taxonomic literature, it may be single axis or multi axis type. Single axis key uses a single set of characters in pre described format in any given time in a step by step manner until the identification is made. 
it may be intended or bracketed type. And a multi-access key involves a number of attributes and in any order as desired by a user. It involves use of punch cards, edge punch cards, or body punched cards. Collective use of attributes is referred to as polyclean. And a key is often constructed and used following a standard protocol. In Unit 4 of BBYCT133, as you go through your course material, you will see what are taxonomic evidences. In taxonomy, evidence is the information used in context for a purpose such as identification or classification. The foundation of plant taxonomy was laid on a number of attributes of plants and groups studied from time to time. Such taxonomic information can be realized in many ways to prove a hypothesis, solve a problem, characterize a taxon, classify a group of plants, or derive evolutionary relationship among plants. So, if we go through the course content of BBYCT133 of this unit, we can see that the scope and methods of plant taxonomy that have evolved through times broadly can be classified as alpha and omega taxonomy. Alpha taxonomy is analytical and empirical. At this level, an organism is identified. It is characterized and named on the basis of morphology. It is also referred to as classical, orthodox, or formal taxonomy. Omega taxonomy provides interpretative classification and helps understand evolutionary and phylogenetical relationship among organisms. It is also referred to as beta, neo, and modern taxonomy. The characters or the attributes provide useful inputs to identify and classify a plant. All of them together are called taxonomic evidences. Such evidences could be physical, chemical, or biological. The taxonomic evidences from morphology, anatomy, embryology, palynology, cytology, etc. constitute physical taxonomic evidences. The primary and the secondary metabolites constitute chemical taxonomic evidences. The information carrying bio macromolecules, bio, uh, bio macromolecules such as nucleic acid and proteins are called biological taxonomic evidences. They are also called cementides. The molecular data obtained from the DNA of nuclear, mitochondrial and chloroplast origin provides important insight into phylogenetic systematics. Study of structure, polarity, symmetry, shape and size of pollen grain is called palynology. The palynological evidences from both extant as well as the extinct plants are very important physical taxonomic evidences. Chromosome morphology, the karyotype studies, which are also called ideograms, position of centromere in a chromosome and behavior of chromosomes at meiosis all together are also very informative taxonomic evidences. Directly visible chemicals within a cell in the form of starch grains and crystals are also helpful in identification and determination of relationship in plants. Chemicals such as flavonoids, iridioids, alkaloids, beta-lanes, anthocyanins, glucosinates, polyacetylenes, cyanogenic glycosides, terpenes, etc. are termed secondary metabolic taxonomic evidences. For proper characterization, identification and classification of plants, taxonomic evidence thus forms a variety of sources that can be gathered prior to any definite interpretation regarding phylogenetic relationships amongst various plants or plant groups. And thus, in unit 15, 
which is taxonomic hierarchy. We are going to understand the concept of taxonomical hierarchy and the terms taxon, category, and rank. We are also going to appreciate the salient features or characteristics of species, genus, family, and order, and also discuss the species concept. So as you go through the course content that has been provided to you, we will see that taxon represents an adequate, appropriate, and a specific term to designate an entity or a taxonomic group. It should be monophyletic and represent a clade, an ancestor, or a descendant lineage. When we say rank, it is the level in the hierarchy or location of a category in the taxonomic hierarchy division, class, order, family, genus, species are all examples of ranks. Any given organism can belong to a number of ranks. And the major ranks can be subdivided into minor ranks. For example, class into subclass, family into subfamily, and so on. An orderly array composed of a series of inclusive level comprises of categories. Thus, categories are the ranks to which taxa are assigned. Species, genus, family are all examples of categories. Higher category is inclusive of all lower categories beneath it. For example, category family would comprise of all the genera belonging to that given family and so on. Thus, species, genus, family, order, class, division constitute various taxonomic groups. The most basal taxonomic group would be species. However, even lowly placed species can be inclusive of subspecies, the varieties, the forms, the race, or the cloth. Species concept could be interpreted in terms of morphology, biology, typology, evolution, phylo uh, we can say phylogeny, ecology, etc. So with this, we have just discussed BBYCT133 block 3. And to conclude, BBYCT133 we uh, units 16 to 20. If you go through your course material, it is block four consisting of nomenclature and systems of classification. You can see that unit 16 is binomial nomenclature, 17 scientific naming of plants, which is called nomenclature, the 18 where we have systems of classification, unit 19 biometrics, numerical taxonomy, and unit 20 is cladistics. This block 4, which is the last block of BBYCT133, and in today's concluding counseling session for this particular course, we are going to see that there are five subunits which primarily deals with the classification and scientific naming of plants, codes, laws, provision, and rules of nomenclature of plant species. Systematic botany is a challenging field of science where there is identification, classification, and nomenclature. Nomenclature is primarily concerned with the process of naming plants and the determination of a correct name of a known plant according to a nomenclatural system. So, Systematic botany is that field of science that involves identification, classification, and nomenclature, as I just mentioned. And here, a Latin name is provided to the plant, and determination of the correct name of the plant, known plant is done according to a particular nomenclature system. 
Any given plant can have one or more common or vernacular names, but only one scientific name, which is a binomial name. Prior to Carl Linnaeus' time, a given plant was known by a polynomial name, which consisted of a generic name followed by a phrase of many words that described its morphological characters. Then the Swiss physician and botanist Caspar Bohin published a list of more than 6,000 plants, Pinax theatre botanici, as I already mentioned this, that this Pinax was a catalog of plant names along with all the synonyms for each of the listed plants. Bohin used a combination of two words to name the plant. However, he did not describe the characteristics of the generic name. And it was Carl Linnaeus, a Swiss naturalist, professor of botany and medicine, who introduced the concept of binomial nomenclature. According to him, each plant shall be of two words, that is binary or binomial, consisting of a generic name followed by a specific epithet. No two different kinds of plants shall bear the same name. And the author of two volume work, Species Plantarum, 1753, Linnaeus is regarded as the father of plant taxonomy. So, here in Unit 17, we see that there is nomenclature, which is the scientific naming of plants. Taxonomists name a new taxon or determine the correct name for old taxon that has been remodeled, divided, united, transferred, or changed in a rank in accordance with the code. The ICN for al algae, fungi, and plants lays the guidelines that give all the aspects of nomenclature, and this international code of nomenclature is the code which determines the correct name of a specimen according to an identification or classification system. It replaces and discourages the use of common or vernacular names of the taxon. It is governed by laws and provisions. Principally, the code lays down the rules that determine the ranks of taxa typification, principles of priority and its limitations, the effective and valid publications, the author citation, the retention and rejection of names, etc. The International Botanical Congress at their periodical meetings recommends the changes, if any, to the court. The last IBC the 19th International Botanical Congress was held at Shenzhen, China in 2017 and the new code was published in 2018. The unit 18 of this last block is systems of classification. And this takes into account the various natural and artificial systems of classification where classification of plants has been defined as the basic method employed by us to organize the plant world. An ideal classification would therefore aim to establish and determine the position, rank of a new taxon and determine the correct position for old taxa and also provide a relationship among plants in practical and natural ways. A classification is regarded as good and successful if it is comprehensive, constituent, consistent, and compatible with other systems. It should be able to get modified with new knowledge and techniques. The various systems of classifications are grouped into artificial, natural, and phylogenetic ones. The system proposed by Carl Linnaeus is one of the best examples of artificial system of classification, 
where he recognized 24 classes in a system of classification. His system includes all kinds of plants, including cryptogams. Then there is the natural system of classification where two British botanists, Bentham and Hooker, proposed a system which is chiefly based on the form relationship. A total of 202 families were recognized in the system, the starting family being Ranunculaceae and Poaceae of Gramini, which is today called not of Gramini, the Poaceae, which is Gramini, being the ending family of the system. French botanist Bernard de Jussieu and Anton Laurent de Jussieu and A.P. de Candolle have also proposed the natural system of classification of plants. The phylogenetic system of classification is those where plants are grouped according to their evolutionary and genetic affinities. The most popular under this category is by German botanists Engler and Prantl. In Engler and Prantl system of classification, unisexual naked flowers in catkin are considered as the most primitive type of flowers. In this system, the position of gymnosperms just before the angiosperm is an important point of merit. As a whole, 303 families of flowering plants are recognized in this system. In unit 19, we see there is biometrics and numerical taxonomy. The term biometrics is derived from the green word, Greek word bio, life, and metrics is to measure. So biometrics is a term that encompasses the application of modern stas statistical method to the measurements of biological objects. And the numerical taxonomy is based on certain principles. So here we see that biometrics is a new area of research and numerical taxonomy is a mathematical and statistical evaluation of the taxonomic information and computation of the data that has been provided. And it is a new approach to understand classification. Here, in numerical taxonomy, proper selection of characters is an important feature. It is based on seven principles. The basic unit in the study of numerical taxonomy is selection of operational taxonomic units, OTU, which varies with the material being studied. There are two methods of coding taxonomic information, binary coding and multi-state coding. The cluster analysis of OTUs, that is operational taxonomic units are done and arranged hierarchic hierarchically in a tree diagram, which is a dendrogram. The numerical taxonomy has several applications, such as bacterial classification, reclassification of several angiosperming taxa, etc. And then in this last unit of BBYCT 133, we see in unit 20 and understand what are cladistics. The term phenetics as proposed by Robert Sokal and Peter Smith in 1963 is based on the principles of plant taxonomy. And in this scheme, weightage is given to the overall similarities of characters. Most of the presently used system of classification has been established on phylogenetic principles, but largely founded on structural or phenetic relations. Taxa with similar structures are called phenetic groups. And from a given group or taxa, the phenetic groups can be expressed and analyzed through a branching diagram, which is called a phenogram. Thus, in this particular unit, 
we can understand that classification has undergone a change from not natural artificial to phylogenetic phenetics is primarily based on the principles of overall similarity among organisms it encompasses incorporation of objective quantitative and qualitative characteristics it is an extension of numerical taxonomy the diagrammatic representations of phenetic classification is called a phenogram and the phylogenetic systematics is called cladistics and the evolutionary tree of life generated by its study is called a cladogram this cladogram consists of clado cla clades nodes internodes outgroups and hypothetical taxonomic units cladistics is primarily based on the principle of descent of the character or character states evolving from ancestral plesiomorphic ones to derive epomorphic ones study of cladistics involves the understanding of meanings of character character state homology homoplasy morphocline monopoly paraphyletic polarity parsimony and many other related terms clades could be node based branch based or epimorphy based computer analysis is involved in the development of cladograms which are reproducible but are also falsifiable so we have understood in this particular unit about cladistics and with this our course content and discussions for the unit 16 to 20 of block 4 which is nomenclature and systems of classification is over we have understood here that what is the concept of taxonomical hierarchy and we have explained the terms taxon category and rank so after study this a clear concept of numerical taxonomy should be known to you and you should be able to define phenetics cladistics and the associated terms the constructs and all to analyze the phenograms the international code of nomenclature is again important here so with this i have Uh, understood that there is a great need for understanding the concepts of plant ecology and then to understand what is environment population community ecosystem and eco sphere so in my last few classes i began with this introduction in my unit 1 of bbyct and as i progressed in this we talked of our second unit which was the ecological factors the soil and water and we introduced the concept of soil its origin its composition its profile then the water its states precipitation types the global distribution and the water cycle we also understood in unit 3 the various factors which were the abiotic factors of light and temperature the lights main source was solar energy and there were seasonal and diurnal fluctuations then there were many optimal and limiting factors which influenced the distribution of plant world as far as temperature was concerned there were latitudinal and altitudinal variations and the global temperature distribution did influence the distribution of flora and fauna and after this we also understood that 
in unit 4 there was adaptations of hydrophytes and xerophytes where there were free floaters rooted plants submerged plants and rooted submerged plants followed by rooted emerged plants in xerophytes they were ephemeral annual succulents etc and they showed a variety of adaptations to the prevailing conditions so as we conclude the today's block four we have understood what is taxonomy what are the various system of classification what is binomial nomenclature what is biometrics numerical taxonomy and cladistics with this i have concluded my counseling session if there are questions you are requested to post them they will be communicated to me and i will try answering it thank you have a good day